right, so now we have this sort of underlying behavioral model, right? This behavioral model is trying to explain all this sort of wide range of behaviors is people are trying to set marginal cost equal to marginal benefit. Uh, this applies both to consumers and producers. We can think about the market as just an aggregation of all of these individual marginal benefit equals marginal cost decisions. Uh, each of the decisions is driven by trying to set marginal benefit equal to marginal cost. So uh, bringing this back to supply and demand, right? These marginal benefit and marginal cost correspond to individual decision makers. They're not the same for everybody. And if we're just even looking at the same market, the marginal benefit for one person is not going to be the marginal benefit. For another, not only because our preference is different, but because our uh, the decisions that we're trying to make are of different kinds of decisions. Uh, do we have a slide on this? Uh, okay, yeah. So, uh, for example, let's talk about what the price is, right? In a supply and demand market, the price, where, where does that fall uh, in our marginal cost and marginal benefit situation? Well, if we were to determine with the jalapeno, the price of the jalapeno was my marginal cost. Right. Every time I bought another jalapeno, I had to pay and give up because the price of that jalapeno. But if I was selling jalapenos, then that would be my marginal benefit. Every time I sell another jalapeno, I get paid the price. Right. So that same value, that price, is going to end up on different sides of the decision for me and for the producer of jalapeno. So it's important to think carefully about what's going to go where. Right. And in some sense, we can use common sense to figure this out. Uh, but let's see how it sort of goes. So the same, using the same logic we had before, the seller's marginal cost from the last benefit. All right. So taking this back to our supply and demand model, let's pick a quantity. Let's say we're going to pick a quantity of, let's say, 10. And we know that whatever point we have on the supply curve for that quantity, that's going to be the marginal cost of production for that unit of the good. The 10th unit costs them 15 to make. Uh, from this, we also see that as we increase the number of units, we're gonna, our marginal costs are gonna go up, we decrease, they go down. Um, and uh, let's do the same thing on the demand curve. On the demand curve, we've got 10, and let's say that this goes to, I don't know, 18. That's telling us that the marginal benefit derived from the 10th unit of the goods sold is 18. Now, where is the marginal benefit equals marginal cost Sort of decision coming in here. How is that getting picked? How's that getting sort of rammed into this little point? Well, what this is saying is that uh, the decision to buy that was made in the pursuit of trying to set marginal benefit equal to marginal cost. So we can, we can go the other way with this as well, right? So here's the price, right? At which the quantity is 10, the quantity demand is 10. So if the price is 18, the marginal cost is 18 to the consumer, right? The price is 18, then the marginal cost is 18. So this point right there on the demand curve comes about because somebody said, hey, at a price of 18, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and buy this unit right now, which is telling us that the marginal benefit of this unit must have been 18, right? That's why this point is here, okay? that uh, uh, at this price of 18, we follow it over, we hit the demand curve at the exact point, at the exact number of units for which the marginal benefit is 18, right? If the marginal benefit of the 10th unit was not 18, if it was 17 or something like that, then we wouldn't hit this point right here, right? It would be somewhere else. So we, if we figure out what the price is, we can say, okay, just like the whole thing, you know, are we gonna buy the first one? Yeah. Great, because uh, the price is above that, uh, or sorry, the marginal benefit is above that price. Are we going to buy the second one? Yeah, because the marginal benefit is above that price. Are we going to buy the third one? Yes, because the marginal benefit is above that price. Fourth one, fifth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, eighth one, ninth one, tenth one. The tenth one, the marginal benefit is now equal to the price. And so we stop. We don't buy anymore because the marginal benefit of the 11th unit must be less than 18 because we can see that it's lower on the demand curve, right? So the fact that we hit this point right here is because we're trying to hit marginal benefit equal marginal cost. The price component on this y-axis is our marginal cost. The line represents the marginal benefit, and we keep going until they're equal. That's where we get this 10 from. And we can work backwards, just like we worked backwards from observing that you did one unit at, uh, at a price of, uh, of uh, 15 to figure out, well, what's your marginal benefit at one, right? So if we start with the price, we can say, is it above, is it above, is it above, wait till they're equal, that's the quantity. If we know the quantity, we can work backwards to figure out what your marginal benefit is at that price. 
see a little bit of confusion on places on faces. Let's do the same thing on the supply, which might make it a little bit clearer as well. So let's say the price happened to be 15, right? You can say, well, how many units do I want to sell and provide? Well, my, first, my marginal cost of the first unit down here is way less than 15. They're offering me 15. My costs are less than 15. Yes, I'm going to make that unit. Okay, how about the second one? Second one, okay, my costs are still less than 15. I'm still going to make it, right? The marginal benefit of selling the good, 15, is higher than the marginal cost of making it. Since they're not equal yet, that means I need to keep going, right? I'm going to make another one because the price is still above my marginal, my marginal cost. Another one, another one, another one. And keep going until they're equal. Uh, and then once I get to the point where my marginal uh, cost of production is also 15, that's where I stop because they're equal to each other. Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah. So the fact that we hit the demand, the spike curve right there, that's, that's, that's saying this that the marginal benefit is going to be 15, right? That's where we get this from. The marginal cost is also 15 at this point, right? We are stopping here because that's where they're, they're equal to each other. And so given a price, which is the marginal benefit for the producer, we can ask, where's the marginal benefit can equal the marginal cost? Right there? Well, then that's the quantity. We can also go the other way around and say, well, if that's the number that we're going to produce, uh, we follow it up to the supply curve, here's what the price has to be for them to be equal at that point, right? If the, if the marginal uh, cost of production is 15, then you're also going to have to pay me 15 to get me to make that many. Because I'm going to keep going until I hit marginal benefit equal marginal cost. Taking what we have here, using this logic that we had before, the seller's marginal cost from the last unit they sell is going to equal the buyer's marginal benefit from the last unit sold. Right. How can we figure this out? Well, if we're looking at our equilibrium on supply and demand, well, here's our equilibrium, right? Whatever this quantity is, that's Q star. Whatever this price is, that's P star. Right. So if we know the quantity we're talking about, what is the seller's marginal cost of making that unit? Where can I find that on this graph? The seller's marginal cost of making Q star units. Hmm? Yeah, totally. It's P star, right? Because just like over here, we follow the quantity up until we hit the line. That's the seller's marginal cost at that quantity, right? And so here is the seller's. Marginal cost, it's P star, right? I hope you can guess at this point what the consumer's marginal benefit is on this graph, right? It's also P star, right? We start with quantity, just like you did over here. Take the quantity, follow it up to the demand curve. This is the marginal benefit of consuming that many units of the good. So we have the seller's marginal cost here, P star. We have the consumer's or buyer's marginal benefit, so also P star. They're the same. We can get two things from this. The fact that at equilibrium, seller's marginal cost equals buyer's marginal benefit. So one thing that we can get from this, this idea that at the equilibrium, the seller's marginal cost equal the buyer's marginal benefit, uh, then uh, one, Remember that thing we did before about why it doesn't keep going, like why they don't buy and sell more units? Well, the same thing I did applies here, right? Well, why don't they buy and buy sell more than this? Well, because the marginal cost of the next unit is higher than the marginal benefit, right? If we were to increase the quantity, let's say Q star plus one, here's the seller's marginal cost, here's the buyer's marginal benefit, the costs are higher than the benefit. It's not worth it to anybody to buy or sell this additional unit. From the seller's point of view, this additionally, the, their marginal uh, uh, cost would be up here. The price that they sell for, the marginal benefit would be down here. The marginal cost is higher than the marginal benefit. They don't want to continue selling more. From the buyer's point of view, the marginal benefit of consumption is down here. The price or marginal cost of buying it is up here. The cost is higher than the price, not worth it though. So that's one reason why it's a, it's a sort of a reinterpretation of this idea that we're going to stop, hit that equilibrium and stop, right? Why don't we buy more? Because the costs are above the benefits for both suppliers and consumers. The second thing we get from this is that from society's point of view, marginal benefit equals marginal cost. So there's a couple things going on there. Well, first of all, what do I mean by from society's point of view? Uh, and B, why do we care about that? 
So one, so what society wants is going to come up a number of times in this, in this, in this class. But uh, okay, we're taking a pretty narrow view on what society wants in this class. It's pretty narrow. And what I mean by it is, are we using our resources as effectively as possible? Right, that's all we're talking about here. Um, and so uh, we want society to start maximizing its economic surplus in the same way that an individual would when they're making their own decisions. Right, so like I said, it's a narrow conception of what society wants, but that's what we're talking about. So how can we tell uh, whether that's happening? Well, if the if society were an individual person, how would they maximize their economic surplus? Well, they'd set marginal benefit equal to marginal cost, right? Because if they consume, if they do more than that, then they're doing things for which the marginal costs are higher than the marginal benefit. If they're doing less than that, there are some additional opportunities that they could be exploiting that they're not. So for society as a whole, adding up the individual experiences of every individual person, both on the consumer and producer side, what is the marginal benefit to everybody of another unit being sold and consumed? It's whatever the person who got that thing gets from it, right? If the world produces an apple and you get the apple and you eat the apple, then how much better that apple made your life is, just from society's point of view, the benefit of that apple, right? Society likes that you just ate an apple and you're happy about it, right? How about the marginal cost? What is the marginal cost from society's point of view? Well, it's whatever resources were used to produce that apple. And if you got more out of the apple than it, made, it took up in resources, then again, from society's point of view, that is a good thing. So how can we maximize that? How can we most effectively use all of the resources that we have and assign them in the most efficient ways? Well, we should be following the golden rule. We want marginal benefit to equal marginal cost. So from society's point of view, the marginal benefit of a good is whatever the buyer gets from it. That's the marginal benefit. The marginal cost of a good is whatever the seller has to do to produce it, marginal cost. And we can follow the cost benefit principle by setting them equal to each other. Which brings us back to this, right? At the equilibrium, the seller's marginal cost, which we've determined is also society's marginal cost, is equal to the buyer's marginal benefit, which is also society's marginal benefit. So from society's point of view, they're maximizing the use of their resources. They're using the most as efficiently as possible by hitting that equilibrium point right there. If we make more than this, then we are producing stuff uh, for which people are not getting as much out of it as we're using resources for it. If we're doing less, then there are people out there who would be benefiting from more stuff, but uh, they may be benefiting more than the resources that it would take to make it, and yet they're not getting it. 